Hi guys, uh, I'm here today to talk about some questions that I've asked the health department uh, in estimates previously. In the past, I've asked them uh, why they think the vaccine is fit for purpose, because it didn't stop transmission and it didn't stop infection. And Professor Kelly and others uh, would always reply that it reduced the severity of disease. So I've asked uh, the health department in prior questions on estimates for these figures and the response that I got was, was that the unvaccinated death rate from Omicron was running at about 32% for people over 70 versus the unvaccinated death rate for people from Alpha uh, that had a death rate for people over 70 who were unvaccinated of about 22, 23%. So it's almost 40% higher for Omicron, the death rate, than what it was for Alpha. So I then proceeded to go back to estimates and ask Professor Kelly uh, why these figures were higher for Alpha, Omicron than they were for Alpha. Uh, he replied that you know he conducted a study or you know his department conducted a study of 3.8 million people, uh, and you can uh, listen to the following uh, conversation. Uh, I'll refer again, as I did earlier, to the to the recent. Uh preprint publication by the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance categorically shows um, that within the Omicron wave, vaccines are entirely and incredibly effective. Australian study of 3.8 million people over the age of 65, which clearly demonstrates the vaccines are effective uh, in, in decreasing death. Um, it's absolutely categorically correct. So anyway, after estimates, I had a constituent send me that study, and I'm very glad that he did. Now, it turns out that this so-called study of 3.8 million people uh, was really more of a data analysis uh, program rather than a study. I don't know about you, uh, but I don't know of people over 65 who were run by the health department and individually studied by the health department for the purposes of determining whether or not the vaccine was effective. I know my father, uh, who's 89, has never been contacted by the health department. So for them to claim that they've conducted a study of 3.8 million people without individually diagnosing those 3.8 million people, I think is a furphy in itself. But the study also concludes that the vaccines actually reduced all-cause mortality. Now, I find that incredible in light of the fact that excess, or well, actual deaths, I'll use the word actual deaths, actual deaths jumped by almost 10,000 people in 2021, and remember this is the year in which COVID didn't really escape into the community. Uh, we did have 1,300 deaths in 2021, which was 300 more than the 1,000 deaths in 2020 from COVID, but that's a long way of, short of explaining the increase in 10,000 deaths. Uh, and then the following year, we went from 172,000 deaths to 190,000 deaths in 2022. So for this study to conclude that they've reduced all-cause mortality is just a furphy. And let's not forget that they didn't actually diagnose every individual in that 3.8 million study. So how would they know uh, when these people had symptoms or adverse effects, what the adverse effects were from? Were they from the vaccine? Were they from the virus? Were they from pre-existing comorbidities? To just make a generalisation across 3 million people based on an analytical study rather than a diagnostic study just goes to show how desperate they are to come up with any sort of story uh, to continue to push their narrative that the vaccines are fit for purpose when they clearly aren't. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.